So you know when you're working on an edit, you jump into Fusion, you make a bunch of different effects, you come back to the edit page to continue your edit, and sometimes you jump back to rewatch it to get the timing right, but then whenever you get over that one clip that you added all of those effects in, you get playback that's similarly to this, where it's almost nothing, you can't really see anything, and it does one or two frames per second if you're lucky. Well, there's a new feature that was added into DaVinci Resolve that actually alleviates some of those uh, issues very quickly and it doesn't affect your timeline. So you don't have to be worried about getting a file from another location, dropping it in, making sure that the, the clip is uh, positioned in there and that the right frame numbers are lined up and all of that jazz. Today, we're gonna go over how to render in place on the edit page within DaVinci Resolve 17. So without further ado, Let's jump in. Before we get started, for those who haven't seen my content before, I do have a website that's fully dedicated to everything DaVinci Resolve. You can go there and take a look at a ton of different tutorials I have, as well as pre-made assets. Okay, so the first clip that I have here, it's just a normal clip that I added in a bunch of the new uh, edit page fusion uh, effects. I added them on and I stacked them up so you get this kind of cool look. It's actually a drone shot, so I added on there the drone overlay. I added the binoculars on, but I made it one lens instead of two lenses. And then I also added a uh, like night vision kind of a, a look to it. They're all effects that come uh, with the new DaVinci Resolve. I stacked them on there so it looks like it's actually a part of this drone. But when you play it back, it's kind of lackluster. And at one point I did talk about how um, the new edit page uh, effects, they weren't able to be cached, at least the ones that go into the effects stack. And that was one of my biggest issues with that. At least the time of this recording, that's still true. You can't cache those. Anything else that has to do with fusion, you can. Transitions, you can cache. Uh, fusion uh, titles, you can cache. Fusion comps that are actually tied to the actual clip on the timeline, you can cache, but not the fusion effects currently. So this kind of plays into how those caches would work, where what it's doing is it's processing the video clip and then making another clip that then allows you to edit on the timeline. Uh, the difference between caching and rendering in place, there's a couple of different things. One, anytime you want to look at the raw file, you can with a cache. But one thing that happens with a cache is that they always you have the possibility of them uh, becoming expired caches if you edit something and then what ends up happening is it then re it has to recache. Uh, so you have that as an issue. Or when you're working on a video clip and you wanna send it to someone else to have them make additional edits to it because it's a cache, it's kind of tied into your current timeline in your DaVinci Resolve so you can't send that as a separate file. With this new render in place, what it's going to do is it's going to take whatever clip you have, you can add handles to the ends of your clip, and then you can actually take that clip itself, send it to someone, have them do some edits to it, send it back, then you can drop it back into your timeline. The other thing that this allows you to do, which is really cool because it's all kind of created in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. Now, this is solely an edit page feature that you're going to be using here, is if at any point in time you have to go back to your raw file, and I'll show you here in a second why you would wanna do that, it will retain all of the information that it used to render out that file. So all of the effects that you added on, if you built anything in Fusion, it'll save all of that stuff. So let's quickly go through how to cache and then also adding them on and the, the pros and cons of doing this and then how you would also revert it back if let's say you have a raw file and you go into the color page and you wanna use the raw settings because when you did the render in place, you didn't do any coloring at that point. So let's jump into it quick. Here on my timeline, this particular clip, uh, like I was saying earlier, this is all just the new fusion effects within this whole effects stack. And obviously you can go through them, but like I was saying, you can't cache this, right? So playback, no matter what you did at this point, it was kind of just because the effects that are on here, uh, you would just need to do something because you can't cache this. So to uh, render in place here, all we're gonna do is click on the clip and up here we have render in place. It's going to ask us what do we want the file type codec to be 
And you, the one thing to remember is this is going to make a file on your computer and then it's going to take the current file that's on your timeline and it's automatically going to switch them out for you and then you're going to be able to have the good playback or you would hope the good playback. And the reason why I say that is because depending on the uh, system that you actually have, a lot of the times if you're not if you're not cautious about what you pick here, you could end up making a substantially larger uh, file. Here is the perfect example of this. If we did this as an uncompressed file, and let's say we have an H.264 file on here, let's say just to throw out something, maybe it is uh, a half a gig, right? So 500 megabytes for this clip, a 4K clip, sure. If I was to do an uncompressed, that might be a six uh, gig uh, file, right? So you have to really pay attention to what what it is that you're going to be switching into. I don't really have the time to go through every single thing. These are all the same render settings that you have on the deliver page, uh, but it's just something to keep in mind here because if you go too low, you're going to have you're going to want to go back and make sure that you have these disabled. You're you'll go it'll it'll almost be like a proxy file at that point. It'll be really lightweight, but it won't be reading from something else when you go to render because it's switching its position in the timeline. It's going to just render whatever's currently on that timeline. So I'm just going to pick one. Let's do high quality. The uh, handles that's going to be so. Let's say these two clips here. Um, there, there's a lot more data, you know, to the left and right. I, I've got a small portion of the clip. What this is going to do is, even though, let's say, I I cut the clip at frame 100, and it went to frame 200, right, on my timeline. What this is going to do is, it's going to go 10 each way, render that, put that on the timeline. So if you ever need to make a transition or you need to, you know, slightly adjust it because maybe. Uh, the lips are out of sync with the audio. You could, you know, you have that 10 frames on each side, so you have 20 frames to work in. Um, you can increase that or not have it included. And then the include uh, video effects, obviously it's your effects here and everything that would be in Fusion as well. So what this is going to do is it's just going to be a straight render and it's going to ask you where do you want to put it. It will put it in the project folder if you have a safe project. Okay, so then we'll just hit render. And then it's going to ask me where I want it. So I just made a folder here, uh, render in place. And what it's going to do is it's then going to render all of this clip out. Once it's done rendering this clip out, it's going to bring it into our project. It's then going to replace the current one with this new file, drop it on there. And the cool thing about this is like I was saying before, all the things that we ever changed on this clip the project will have that information. So if for some reason we don't want this rendered file on there, we can just revert back to the old one. All of my effects will be there. All of my fusion comp will be there. And uh, it'll just be like I never rendered out that file. But rendering it out will then get the uh, fast playback. So once this is done, so now that it's done, it replaced it on here. If we come up to our effects library, we can see that we have this uh, clip, which is the one that was rendered out with all the effects. And then here is the uh, raw clip. Because I added the, the 10 frames on each side, what that did is it added the little 10 frames on that side. If I come to this side, it added, oops, 10 frames on that side, right? So there are our 10 frames. If we ever need to slide it we, or slip it, we can slip it, those, uh, the, the little bit of frames that we have there. So now if we play back, we'll play back at whatever the uh, native resolution of the project is. So there we go. Here is one of the situations where we have a raw file. So if I come over to the color page, we have all of our raw stuff here. I can go in and I can change all of my uh, raw settings. Now, if we were to render this video clip, we're going to lose the access to raw. And the reason being is because it's going to take it into a completely different file type and it's not gonna have any of that raw data. So it would work the same way, we just won't have it. So let's say we did wanna go back to something, maybe this needs to be changed, I need to change the position of this, but there's no effects here. All we have to do is right click and then we have to go up to decompose to original. We click that, it gets the original file. If we click on it, we have all of our effects here. It looks identical 
and now we have both of them. So we can edit here or we can grab the file that we already rendered out here. And that's pretty much it. It's super simple to go back and forth between the two. Uh, like I was saying with a raw file, if you do render this, so I'll quickly uh, do a render in place, sure. And we'll come back and put this a render in place. This will render through. And once we go over to the color page, we're gonna lose all of those color uh, settings here because now it's a completely different file type, right? So that's just another thing to keep in mind if you do have raw stuff, but playback will be super smooth because my computer can play that particular file type back relatively easily and the data rate isn't extremely high that I have to be concerned. So if you do some type of complex effects, now you have a way that you can get them to render in position, bake all of those effects in and still be able to edit and get all your timings and recut clips and not be concerned with all of this extra workload being thrown on your computer and not getting good playback to see if timings right to see if lip sync is correct. But you also have the ability that if something does go astray, you don't like an effect, uh, there was something that you misspelled in some type of effect, whatever it is, you can just uh, right click and go back to the original pretty simply. Uh, and all you lost is, you know, a few minutes. If you're working with someone else that maybe doesn't use Fusion or doesn't use DaVinci Resolve and isn't going to take advantage of the, of the collaborative work environment, uh, you can then send them that clip that whatever, wherever you put it in the folder, you could send them that clip. They could do their edits, bring it back to you. You can drop it back into your project. It's as easy as that and you can get going from there. But yeah, that's kind of it for how to render in place. I think it's an amazing thing. I think like a lot of people that have low power systems will be able to take advantage of these really cool effects. It might take a little bit to render the clip, but once they render the clip, have it on their timeline, they figure out the codec that works best for their system, that they're comfortable with the quality. Um, they can drop it back on their timeline, they can play it, they can get a good idea of what their project is gonna look like, and they don't have to be concerned with if they're gonna run out of space for cash. They can play it and have a smooth experience when they go back in to readjust those edits or add you know, some type of like titles or music or whatever it may be. So it's overall a good, good thing. Um, there were ways around doing this before where you could just take a clip, you could come over to the deliver page and then you could right click here and say, render this clip. It would just take your in and out points, make it specifically on that clip, and then you'd be able to render it out with all of the effects. But then you would have to bring it back into your project, drop it down, and when you would pull the other clip out, unless you stack them, you would lose all of the information from those fusion comps and stuff like that. So this is a much better way of going about doing it. It's a lot less, or it's more intuitive. It's a lot less, um, like scattered all over the place where you're putting files in, you're going to the deliver page, rendering out files, bringing them back in and doing that whole round trip thing. So overall, good thing. If you guys would use something like this, let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it that I have for this. I believe that this is for both the free version and the studio version. So anyone that is using the free version, you get to take advantage of this cool feature. I know that there was a couple of uh, features that I was talking about in the past, as well as in my live streams that, uh, uh, if you had the studio version, you were the only ones that could take advantage of those. But uh, from what I was reading, this is in the free version. So everyone gets to take advantage of this one. But that's kind of all I got for you for this one. Um, yeah, stay safe out there, guys. It's weird right now. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. See you.